Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him above and here below. Praise Him above, ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. It is always good to begin the morning in devotion and worship, remembering who God is. I really think that your Bible reading, or our Bible reading, ought to do uh, two things. First is remind us of who God is. Uh, that would be thankful. Uh, that would be uh, uh, generous, uh, gener have a, uh, a desire to glorify Him. <clears throat> and then secondly, it needs to remind us of who we are. Uh, who we are in Christ and what He's done for us. That in our worship, uh, it would be become service. This morning, my uh, the Bible reading I want to do with you is from First Peter chapter four, and it it speaks that second part, um, who we are in Christ. And so I invite you to to turn there with me to First Peter chapter four. And we'll begin reading in verse 7 here in just a moment. So glad you're joining us uh, on this new new week. And as we begin a new week, we want to want to begin it right. We want to look to God's Word and, and be reminded from God's Word of who we are in Christ. Look at verse 7 of 1 Peter and chapter 4. Now... The end of all things is near. Therefore, be serious and disciplined for prayer. And above all, maintain an intense love for each other. Such love covers a multitude of sin. Be hospitable to one another without complaining. Based on the gift each one has received, use it to serve others as good managers of the very grace of God. If anyone speaks... It should be as one who speaks God's word. If anyone serves, it should be from the strength that God provides, so that God may be glorified through Jesus Christ in everything. To him belongs the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. So a very short passage, but one that is full of instruction for the follower of Christ. He challenges us in these words to consider that the end is near. Consider that this is the day. Live as if this is the day of the Lord's return. The end of all things is near. Therefore, be serious and disciplined. Therefore, let that knowledge, uh, that awareness, shape uh, the way we live this day. If we knew, honestly, if we knew that Christ was going to return today, we would give this day to serving him with gratitude and with eagerness because we're anticipating him. Oh, brother and sister, that's we find throughout the scripture that is to be our attitude, that we should be motivated by that understanding that, that this may be our only day, to serve him. And the fact that he hasn't returned, uh, that he didn't return yesterday, is, remember, it's, it's his mercy towards those who do not know him. He is patient because he desires that all would come to faith in Christ. And it also means that our job, yours and mine, is not done yet. We have more to do. And so this is the day that we do it, um, motivated, understanding uh, that that our time uh, is, is short. So, what is it that we should be doing? Well, if you look at these 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 verses, it makes it very clear that what we should be doing is serving others. Uh, 
uh, it's our role. Uh, we have a role of service. Um, we should use whatever gift, he says here in verse 10. You've been given gifts. You've been given grace. And so, in whatever gift that God has given to you, you're to be motivated by the knowledge of Christ's return to use that gift to serve others. And, and he goes farther to talk about how we actually do that. Right? We're, we're to serve others, motivated. I love this, this phrase he uses, by an intense love, or to maintain an intense love for each other. So here he, he talks about both our service. I believe he's talking about our service to one another as believers and our service to the world. But our service to others and to our, our to our brothers is is out of an intense love for each other. Mm. I think we need to we need to look at our own hearts about that and and ask that question: Do I serve with an intense love? Do I care for others with an intense love? And in that love, you know, he shows us how we serve. We we serve it by um, by covering a multitude of sins, meaning um, by caring for others to to lead them to the right, to to show them how to live, to be hospitable without complaining. Well, that that's a tough one, and I don't think I have to go there very far for you to understand how how tough that is. But how much how important it is that we not complain as we serve, because we serve the Lord. We're not serving others for uh, for for the sake of recognition we're serving uh, for the sake of the Lord and we do it you know based on the gift that we have received let us serve others so the first motive or the first motivation for our service is is love the second is well that's not so much a motivation but it's an empowerment we're empowered by the grace of God. He has, he has given us so much grace. He's forgiven so many sin in our life. He's preserved us and protected us. And all of that flows into our lives to flow out of our lives. Uh, that we would we'd be gracious to one another. And that graciousness would be seen in, in what we say. right? He says, if you speak, do it as though you're speaking the very words of God. So you're careful how you talk to one another, how you talk to others. You pick your words carefully that they would represent who you are as an ambassador for Christ and that you would serve in the strength of his grace, the power uh, of his grace. And you serve uh, for the glory of God. Right? Again, it's it's one thing if you were serving for recognition, then you could go around expecting to get pats on the back and accolades and attaboys and all of that. But that's not why we're serving. We're serving for the glory of God. And so oftentimes that, that, often, that oftentimes goes unnoticed by others. Uh, but it's not unnoticed by the Lord. I mean, I just ask you to think about the last time somebody treated you like a servant. Uh, you probably didn't like it <laughs> at all. Uh, our flesh doesn't like it, but the Lord does, because that's who he is. Jesus came, and he served us. Uh, he, he served us to the very end, to the cross. It was for us. That was his, uh, his expression of love. He humbled himself and became a servant. Uh, Philippians 2 says. Now, if you turn over just a page to the start of 2 Peter, in that first verse, you see uh, one of Peter's definitions of himself, the title that he claims. You know, Simon Peter, a bond slave of the apostle and an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, bond slave is a, a lifetime servant. And that's who we are in Christ. Remember what Jesus said, um, John 15. Uh, 
he said, remember this, no servant is greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they're going to persecute you. You know, at, on both sides of this instruction, um, he talks about how hard our service is going to be. Uh, at the beginning of the chapter, he says, Therefore, since Christ suffered in the flesh, equip yourselves also with the same resolve, because the one who suffered in the flesh has finished with sin. Um, so and he reminds us to, to set our mind to recognize that our service is not going to be easy. Or verse 12, just as you end that reading, it says, Dear friends, don't be surprised when fiery ordeals come along to test you as if something unusual is happening to you. Instead, rejoice as you share in the sufferings of the Messiah. So it says, don't be surprised when hardship comes because you are a servant of Christ. He says, don't think it's something unusual to you. No, it's normal, he's saying, that the servant is not greater than the master. That as we serve him, uh, the world around us is not going to recognize that as service. And they're going to give us a hard time about it, potentially. We can expect that. So don't let it discourage you uh, when, when service becomes hard. But remember who you're serving and why you're serving. You're serving the one who served you. And you're serving to bring glory to his name. And you're serving because the end is near. So remember that. We each desire that when we stand before the Lord, we hear him say, Well done, a good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of my salvation. Uh, we want to hear those words. And those words come when we serve him. So here is a new day, a new week, a new opportunity to serve the Lord with gladness. Let's do that together. I want to pray for you this morning as we begin our new week. Heavenly Father, we come thanking you for uh, the word of instruction and encouragement that you give us. You're reminding us of who we are as your servants. And Lord, we're thankful for your service to us. We're thankful that you have given to us a responsibility, a ministry, um, your grace that it would flow through us, your love that it would flow through us. And so, Lord, we want to dedicate ourselves to that. We desire to love others as you've loved us. We desire to show grace to others as you have shown grace to us, that your name would be glorified in us and through us. Father, I thank you for my brothers and sisters today. I ask your blessing on them. I ask it in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Well, amen, brothers and sisters. I pray that your day... Uh, that in this day, God gives you many opportunities to serve Him. Have a wonderful day.